Caddis Maximus here. I had another opportunity to do the 25-year evolution comparison. In this case, it's uh, with a couple of Milwaukee 3.8-inch hole shooter drills. These are the 0222-1s, uh, sometimes called the triple twos. These were known as Milwaukee's best 3.8-inch drills through the 90s. The difference between my previous DeWalt video is that we're offset 20 years. So the DeWalt was a difference from a 90s drill through one that's continued to be made today. And then my manufacturer difference is 20 years. This is almost the same. The manufacturer difference is 20 years, except for we're starting off at 1974 and ending around the year 2000. And I once had a comment, don't fret too much about old tools. The varnish on the motor windings uh, is rated anywhere from 1 to 300 years. That's how long it, that stuff will last under you know regular conditions. So you can find some very old tools and they'll be generally electrically safe. You'll want to inspect the cord and normal things, but you don't have to worry about uh, the motor windings just wanting to short out against each other unless the tools had a really hard life. But it's surprising how long the varnish will last. These 3H drills were expensive, around $300, or excuse me, $100, <laughs> excuse me. And they didn't sell as many of these, even though they did sell a ton. Over a million of these drills. Surprisingly enough, older 3 8 drills are much less common than half-inch drills because surprisingly enough, people would uh, really, you know, if they needed a, a nice drill, uh, they were thinking a powerful one, they get a half-inch drill, and that would be their expensive drill. So you end up finding a lot more old, nice half-inch drills, where with 3 8 drills, it was more of a general purpose drill, so they weren't going to spend that kind of money. And that's how much these drills cost. I mean, this thing retailed just in a normal hardware store for like $100 back in the 90s. These were also the last of the American-made Milwaukee's. After this, they started going with the modern era. This happens to be a 4,000 RPM quarter-inch drill. This is three and a quarter amps. This is 3.5 amps. In the modern era, they put in, you know, this quarter inch has a, a seven amp motor. And at 4,000 RPM, you really need that power. So I really like this drill. But it isn't quite as heavy duty. They don't have as much of a thermal capacity. That's a really the big difference that people say the old tools are so much better that, you know, I used to run them hard. I used to run them to the point where I had to welding gloves to hold the tool and that's just with thermal capacity. These cramming a seven, eight amp motors into these small housings, one, you gotta make sure you keep your hands, those vents clear. And a vast majority of people aren't using these types of tools where they're like, you know, driving deck screws just one after the other as fast as possible or, you know, other really high load situations and just continuous use situations where the, the tool gets so hot. Where here we have tools that have a motor that's half the output and even better ventilation. I mean, these are the drills where the ventilation goes around 360 degrees. A big portion of that, and what's made these really nice and coveted, is the fact that you can hold it normal. You don't have to worry so much about just covering, you know, that the vents are on the side. If you just hold it normally, there's still plenty of venting wherever or however you decide to hold the tool. Another quick note, if you're gonna buy one of these used or see one of them used, two quick notes. One, these only earlier metal body ones really ran true. What I mean is they were, a lot of people, there's so many complaints about tools and drill bits running out and chucks running out. These Jacobs Industrial Chucks are all center ground and they are, they are beautiful chucks. But when you have threaded chucks, such as on the newer drill, uh, by nature of threads, it, uh, something can't be absolutely perfectly centered. There has to be a little bit of play for you to be able to screw the item on and off, and that allows it to have a small offset one way or another. These old Milwaukee drills have taper mount chucks. There's actually a, a taper known as a Jacobs tuck, chuck taper. I think it's a number one or number two on this. And then there's a, a screw which normally keeps chucks when you run them in reverse from you know, unthreading themselves. In this case, it just prevents it from coming loose. You have to use a metal wedge, which is really thin on one end. It's just a fork that goes in between there. You remove the screw and you have to hammer this fork, which is a metal wedge. You can make one out of a quarter inch piece of steel. You just have to grind it and do a real sharp knife point. So you hammer it in there and the taper pries it apart. 
But these old drills could run super, super on center. If you're somebody who has some situation where you really want a super on center hand drill, uh, these old Taper Mount Milwaukee's might do it for you. Smaller vents, the motors aren't as good as these. You know, they do have a plastic motor housing. Although these, both of these, as far as physical durability, I actually think the newer one, even though it has a 3 8 spindle thread, uh, and there's been some reports of broken uh, spindles on these. This thing, really, as far as dropping on the concrete, is just such a super duty drill. Really thick fiberglass nylon housing. The metal ones are pretty good, but that metal how motor housing here isn't actually that thick. And I've seen a few of these with dented motor housings. However, the motors themselves, this is much better. Welded con and we'll open up the handles, but the motor is much, uh, is even though more powerful, just is doesn't have the physical build durability and robustness as the older tools. Older tools from the you know 60s, 70s, and 80s, there there seemed to be a big worry about this debris and that kind of stuff getting into the motor. I mean, I guess work environments were far dirtier back then, and uh, so they just had all this extra protection that basically only angle grinder motors have nowadays. And so it seems Milwaukee tightened up the venting to make it sure that particles that weren't too big would get in there and damage things. Let's go ahead and drill some bits uh, or drill some holes, a couple one-inch bits, augers, uh, a speed bore, which are really tough to drive. We'll see how it does that. One and a half inch spade bit. Did want to mention, I'm using an, an Irwin. Uh, these are known as ship augers. If you really want deep straight holes with nice even walls that's why you get augers none of these other bits are really going to provide the uh, will allow the hole the uh, the bit to wander as you go deep that's why you have that you use these big auger bits is because they keep the hole straight but these brazilian new Irwins, i you know don't buy them find something else at the wall in milwaukee but these things are just terrible you can see how this is rounded the grinding is terrible it is in a hollow ground here i mean these things are just horrid this is an old American made Irwin and this thing's machined. It's just beautiful, nice, real, even center rod. Center rods are give you a little bit more rigidity. And it's hollow ground, which means they had to do two grinding operations, one going this way and one going back the other way. So the Irwin is just totally you know gone, you know, down the tubes. Quick fast uh, notes. If you're ever gonna buy one of these off of eBay or something. Uh, get the triple two. The triple uh, two two eight was the same drill, but it had it was a slightly cheaper model, and it also had a, a cheaper chuck. Jacobs chucks, but the two two eight had this chuck on it. This whatever this is. This is a Jacobs, you know, thirty one B, thirty one B A, which are nice. These are you know nice traditional uh, heavy duty industrial Jacobs chucks, and you can see the end. It's you know pretty decent. But not like these Milwaukee's. You, this is a 2BA. This is a super duty chuck. And you can see, you can you know when you have a super duty chuck because there's this, these really, the whole body's oversized so that they can have these really deep cutouts. So when the teeth come out, like so, uh, they just have a ton, a huge amount of extra support. These really are super duty chucks. Okay, so we're going to drill with a one-inch uh, self-feeding auger or ship auger bit using this drill right here. I did want to mention that during the 70s and 80s, the primary competition of this nice Milwaukee was actually the Black & Decker. There were some other brands, but none of them really were quite as good as these old Black & Decker heavy-duty uh, hole guns. And it was a real, these were hole shooters, so these were HOL hole guns. And these Black & Deckers, as far as their ergonomics, were beautiful. They basically had perfected their ergonomics. They used the same oversized heavy-duty chuck, 1,000 RPM, but they chose to go triple gear reduction instead of a double gear reduction. But in the 90s, you know, Black & Decker killed off these really nice drills. Where Milwaukee continued to produce their premium ones, at least for a while longer, even though they were more cheapified. And I can't believe I didn't run this earlier. But these old Milwaukee's were, you know, as long as you grease the back bearing, were really beautiful, really smooth drills. Let's see how it does with this one-inch auger bit here. 
We'll use my little uh, torture test piece of lumber here. So, it will do that. And see, the deal is, is modern drills, if you just did that literally for hours on end in some kind of production environment, uh, you know, it would burn it up. It would have a lot of power, but it would just be so much heat that it would eventually have a meltdown. The deal with these is that with the size of the motor and the amount of heat that it can dissipate, you know, with the airflow and the whole body of the tool, it's more proportionate, and so they can be run much harder for much, much longer. Um, although, if you're aware with modern tools, you just got to make sure that those vent fans, uh, you're not covering them up, and they'll generally be okay. I guess what I'm saying is nowadays it seems like the half-inch drills of what's replaced that because they're, you know, a larger tool and with the basically the same size motor, you know, at least with some manufacturers. And they run at the same speeds, you know, a modern DeWalt half-inch drill is a 1,000 RPM, 8.5 amp motor. And it is about 30% bigger than this, and they get pretty good reviews. The other secret to keeping things tight in a Jacob's Chuck, and I forgot to mention this, tighten in all three holes. This tightening in one hole never does it because the way this collar and it's pushing up on these teeth... Uh, it gets a little bit sideways uh, by a microscopic amount, and so you'll feel it tighten a little bit when you, you know, put the key in one hole, tighten, and then just rotate it around, put in each hole. And if you are going to use the same bit all day, do that two or three times, and it will not come loose. I guarantee you. you just have to go around and cinch it, just like kind of cinching some kind of, you know, valve cover or something like that, where you got to go around and do all the bolts. In this situation, you have to go around and hit all the holes a, a little bit each time, and you'll feel it where it just really locks on tight. And one last thing I forgot to mention, you know you have a really nice Jacob's Chuck when they come with these machined keys. These are the premium keys that are only shipped with the really nice Chucks. Whoop, I'm not plugged in here for some reason. Here we go. Really are beautiful sounding, super smooth drills. These Milwaukee's are beautiful. This new one just really is like a well-oiled machine. It is. It's a well-greased machine. Only a quarter amp difference, so we won't see the kind of power difference like we did with the DeWalt, but we'll see how the modern, the quarter amp does. That actually sounded significantly better. You know, that old drill has old brushes, needs new power cord, but that was surprising. This actually delivered much better than what a quarter amp would seem to indicate. That's pretty nice. And the other reason these are three and a half amps is unlike a big eight and a half amp half inch drill, these are designed to basically have as much power as possible without having excessive risk of really twisting your wrist. You know you're using a drill, but it's not kind of the outer control. You really need to brace it super tough. It's right at a nice balance. This is as much a comparison of bits as it is the drills. The other thing they did change is on the really early Milwaukee's, they had four screws on the gearbox, or they reduced it to three on the newer one. Here's the speed bore. I guess this is as much of a test as the darn uh, bits as it is the drills. So the speed bores can be tough to turn, especially backwards. Right there. We were right at the limit of stalling this thing out, and you got some good torque, but not enough to rip it out of your hands. But these speed bore bits are tough. Oh. It is jammed in there. You have to remember that power corded power tools will have on average 30% less power in reverse. It's due to the nature of brushed electric motors. They have uh, what is essentially a timing. So when you reverse the wiring to make them go backwards, the timing is still off. It's optimized for forward operation. Only certain tools that have what is known as rotating brush cards uh, can get around that issue. But that was no joke. These speed bores are really tough to turn. It's, you know, really pretty surprising. Even though they're fast, they don't... 
they're really optimized for just going through dimensional lumber for like framing electricians that type of stuff versus making deep holes so this is a you know a true trial so we'll see how the newer one does with the old one inch speed bore here and this is only an inch this isn't like some massive bit this is really you know speed bores almost need half inch drills to drive them man this new drill it's surprising it is way better yeah and it'll just rip it right out of there too okay I decided to forego the paddle bit uh, just to try to save time oh I have such a hard time not having long videos that big youtuber Abe gets away with it not me I'm gonna do a quick breakdown I'm gonna quickly pop open the handles on this so we can see in the inside it isn't a big secret they have larger brushes in this motor and so it has a higher surge capability maybe a little bit thicker windings but it really was the end of the we'll call it the American drill era of the Milwaukee's they were definitely pretty nice maybe not quite as physically durable or could take as much punishment but man those the new ones really uh, or the last of the American once again really were did deliver Okay, let's open up these handles, and I'll put it on pause, and I'm going to do it sacrilegiously with the DeWalt uh, screwdriver. Did want to show the brush caps on the old one had these nice little metal, metallic or brass metal inserts just to help make it a little, little bit uh, more robust. I will say, like uh, with the power tool manufacturers, they're still intending for you to relatively get into them, even though they've converted to the Torx or the star drives. Uh, that's just more for ease of assembly, but they use these special screws with these wide slots, so you can still just use a regular old flathead screwdriver, just like your old drill, to go ahead and uh, fix it. Here we are with both of them apart. A few things that are obvious differences just from your perspective. I was going to open up the gearboxes, but I think they'll just take a little bit too much time and they have a double reduction gearbox and with the ability to look up the parts diagrams I don't think there's something so interesting in the gearbox since they're basically the same the gears are just a little bit bigger in the newer drill and I know I'm familiar with these drills the quick caveat is uh, with generally with Milwaukee tools they've almost always used helical cut gears for decades uh, another nice thing about them the second thing is they really do put rolling bearings wherever they can um, on this one, it is helical cut on the first stage with a little molar spindle connects to the idler gear, but it are, they are straight cut on the final output where both stages are helical cut on this new one. That would be the big difference and why it is just a little bit quieter and smoother when it runs. But cutting helical gears is expensive, so that's why they usually only do it on the smaller motor spindle where it needs it. Uh, on this drill, we have a 6 amp rated switch. It's actually printed on the other side. We can see we have a wire getting pinched, so I should probably deal with that because it is a cast metal motor housing. Let me get a better flashlight. Here we go. I finally got a flashlight. Uh, things that are obvious, we can see in the handle where they have inserted metal. They have metal inserts uh, for where it screws in, so nice and robust. Uh, we can see that the brush guides or holders are actually billet brass and uh, are pretty darn mice one solid not a stamp piece of sheet metal one solid piece we can see that the field winding has this nice whoop blinding you there a nice heavy duty uh, wrapping that's why I was meaning physical durability I mean there's a heavy duty over wrapping over all the wires and then the wires of course have their normal insulation uh, so it can take a lot of physical abuse like actual wood chips coming in here getting caught up in the motor and kind of beating around a little bit. You can see what they've done with the motor. It's really well guarded. They put this heavy-duty wrapping right around where the wires come off, uh, the contacts on the armature, and we can see where they're stamp welded, which is very uh, physically robust. It really is pretty nice. And, of course, it's a grounded drill. But there is some differences. Now, uh, surprisingly enough, for some of the sacrifices that Milwaukee made, I don't think we need the light for this. Uh, they did improve it. The trigger on this is an 8 amp trigger, and it's a 3.5 amp tool, which is really surprising. That is more than double. 
Uh, the rating, pretty darn nice right there. But we can see where they cheapified. You know, you can see that here's just the exposed motor windings. They're so pretty heavy duty. They're still pretty nice. But they had to shrink the vents a little bit just to get a, try to make sure less debris hit that. One thing that they did improve is the circuit. That's one of the most unreliable things is the variable speed goes out. It's only a single speed drill. Well, it's because the circuit's just integrated. This one is when they started breaking out that variable speed circuit. It's on its own little heat sink right next to the vent, keeping it nice and cool. And it allows it to handle more power. Really nice. Milwaukee is one of very few tool manufacturers that ever did this, where they broke out that variable speed chip on corded tools. And it really, you know, was a good idea. Really did earn them the actual, you know, true heavy duty. One thing, though, is like the brushes are just stamped. They actually are in just little sheet metal guys that are inside here. I have to open up the other side because that chip is covering the motor. We can see that the brushes are actually a little bit wider, but for that sacrifice, let me get the flashlight again here. You see I left it turned on conveniently. There's no extra wrapping around the motor. The contacts are folded, which are actually pretty reliable. What makes them have issues is they are folded over contacts. So when debris gets in there, it can hit against the side of one of those and break it loose, where obviously when they're welded with the wrapping on the internal windings, I mean, it pretty much has to be, you know, pieces of, you know, nails or something like that that get in there to actually destroy it. And this one's grounded, even though it's a double insulated tool, they still have a, a ground connection, which I thought was interesting. How is that achieved? There's actually a, the ground wire connects a little metal bar that's going all the way through the motor housing to touch the gear housing. They do that because in case you drill into some kind of wires. Anyway, I'm going to finish up this absurdly long Milwaukee video, uh, but I really wanted to do a long one on these drills because these really are some of the best ones as far as professional 3.8 corded drills that were just available to uh, any person in the United States for, you know, tell you the truth, quite a long time. There are a lot of other companies that came close, but I don't know if they ever quite made it to those these Milwaukee's. And if you find one, try to find one of these newer ones. Electrically, they really are much heavier duty than the older ones and do obviously deliver significantly more power than the quarter amp increase that the nameplate indicates. Why on earth would they have an 8 amp trigger in this thing? There was another improvement. The cord pinches is a standard oversleeve and a pinch. The old ones had an integrated molding. You had to buy Milwaukee's special power cords. And it's always kind of a hassle to use a standard power cord and cord pinch. you got to cut it up and do all this weird stuff to make it work in these old drills. Something to be aware of. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time. Caddis Maximus out.